And here we are, as ever was, as not usual, on a Thursday night, it's VT Talk. Tonight is Thursday, the 9th of January, in the year of our Lord, 2014. And after a little bit of techno trickery, and I think the technical term is messing about, you'll see that the centre monitor behind Keith's head, for Keith is with us for a VT Talk. <laughs> Which is much the key surprise. Uh, don't worry about that, it's fine. It's all fine. Um, in the centre monitor, there should be Twigglet, Sarah Jakes, but she's not actually in there. She's in there. Hi, Sarah. Hello. How are you diddling, Cop? All right. I'm all right, thank you. I'm going to ask you about the Twigglet bit in a bit, but not right now. Right. You'll also notice over my right shoulder in this monitor here, swathed in great clouds of vapour, Matt Gerrish, Cybernoid, as it was, who is with us to talk about what's going on on Saturday in... In Wales, in Cardiff. In Welsh Wales, in, and you'll see, you'll hear a very, very deep Welsh accent from Matt. Sounds a bit like Mark Schultz, doesn't he? Spit like that. As per usual, over on the right-hand side, as I look at it, the left-hand side, as you look at it, I think, we have the effervescent loveliness, the bountilicious babe, the bountiful beauty that is the what? What? That is the what? <laughs> it's the one and only Sav. How are you doing, Sav? All right. Oh, fine. How's yourself, dear? Well, you know what they say. I'm, whoop, I'm walking about and breathing. Um, and at the moment, I'm sweating like a donkey. In fact, I'm sweating like a pig that's been whipped to market and all the way back. And for the second time ever, only tonight, we've got Keith joining us for VT Talk. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to tell you what was going on. It's, it's you look, you come, look very sorry. Yes. It's, it's, well, it's, come as, it's come as a bit of a surprise to all of us. Right, yes. We, we weren't expecting next door's house getting dropped on Gary Dibley's shed. Well, it wasn't next door's house, it was their tree. Oh. Uh -huh. And he's, yes. Hey, that's awful, that. It's not good. It's just as well he wasn't in it. This was the storms. It was with the storms, Dave, yes. Dave, can I interrupt you? Um, yep. Chat is saying Keith is way too loud. Is he? Yeah. Keith, you're he way too loud. He always is. <laughs> you're way too loud. It's that one. Try that. Hello. There you go. One. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Is that better? I'll find out momentarily. We'll, we'll find out. Yes, apparently he was coping for the lesbians and, uh, and, the, and the branch fell off the tree and hit his shed. Don't ask. <laughs> it's, it's Gary Dibley, so we just don't ask. Right, we I just, won't comment then. No, it's probably best not. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been a while since we've had a VT talk, hasn't it, Sav? It has, yes. How long will it be? Oh, what, three weeks? It's about that, isn't it? It's, 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 it? <laughs> it's been a while. It has been a while since last we were on. And all sorts of stuff has been happening since then, of course. Uh, with regards to the TPD and indeed at the end of the week on Saturday there's like people going to be everywhere outside BBC places um, to have a vape meet and if they are asked to tell the BBC what's going on I heard an intake of breath there Sav have you got something from chat already? Me? No, 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 no Right, now all kinds of things to say. Now, Matt and and um, and Sarah, you just chime in when you feel like it. Will do. Just shout yeah. in, and and it's not like a hangout. It won't automatically go to you. But when I've realised you want to say something, I'll come to you. It's that's, that's kind. Of, it's going to be different, Keith. I can sense that. Yes, yes. it's yes. going to be different. Um, so right, look, let's go to camera three. I'll talk to camera three. A lot of people on Twitter. And I, need, uh, I want to get this cleared up before we go any further and before we get into all the good stuff that's happening on Saturday and what Sarah's been doing today because that's it's exciting. It's exciting what she's been doing. I'm excited by it. Um, yes, those of you that are on Twitter will have seen and may indeed have expressed your shock and dismay <coughs> at the tweets from a certain Liberal Democrat MEP by the name of Chris Davies. Today... I phoned the Aldi press officer, had a conversation with him. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but suffice it to say, from everything I was told, Chris is on his own. He's not expressing the views of the Aldi group. Indeed, my understanding is that they are 
90% of the way towards deciding a table, an amendment, they are not happy. They are no happier than we are and they see no reason to abandon the fight at this stage. And I wanted everybody to know that. While we're talking about MEPs, I also want to mention Nikki Sinclair, who has... I was going to say been making herself a nuisance. She hasn't been making herself a nuisance, but she has asked me to give her the names of people who would be prepared to go on the radio with her on Saturday at the Vape Meet in Birmingham. Can I ask you please to get hold of Dave Malik? Davey Malik's going to be there, Dave Kitson's going to be there, but get hold of Davey Malik or tweet me, tweet anybody, just give me, DM me, whatever, give me a number, I'll get you in touch with Nicky Sinclair or tweet Nicky Sinclair directly if you're going to be in Brum because apparently she's got it all sorted out the radio is going to be taking notice this is fabulous I think it's fabulous do you think it's fabulous Keith? yes uh, yeah Birmingham <laughs> Birmingham Birmingham then Birmingham in, in, I, I, I won't say it's in the black country because I don't think it is I think Birmingham's its own self in the black country separate I don't know but I wherever. Think, I think so. Yeah, I think that's mm. that's about the case. Mm. Any offers in chat, Sav? Uh, Jeff Caldicott's just said he's already done it. Good man, Jeff. That's what, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. The speed. The speed with which Vapor Trails TV viewers do things never ceases to astound me. Never yeah. ceases to astound me. Um, they're brilliant. They are. They're absolutely brilliant. Um, they are the best chat on the face of the planet, it, it's absolutely true to say that, without any shadow of a doubt. Um, let's go to camera one. Keith, I know you can't make it on Saturday because you've got to do that thing called work. Yes, I didn't unfortunately. I didn't realise that nonagenarians worked. Nonagenarians. <laughs> yes, occasionally, yes. On a yes. Saturday? You know, a little bit of crust. Pardon? Crust. Oh, right. Know. A few mm. bob to, mm. to pay for your vaping supplies. Yes. <laughs> like yes. he pays for anything. <laughs> Once a month, and unfortunately it's Saturday. Oh, well, never mind. Never mind. I'll uh, I'll raise my voice for you. Thank you. Right. right. So, Matt, what's going to be happening in, in Welsh Wales then, young sir? Fill me in. Right. The basic plan is to everyone gather um, just outside BBC uh, in Cardiff, around about half past ten, quarter to eleven. And as one unit, we'll uh, we'll amble over to the the main the main uh, doors there, and uh, just stand there peacefully vape away, and uh, hopefully someone will come out and have a little chat with us. Indeed, well, my my understanding is, and I don't know how true this is, but my understanding is that every BBC, um, I was going to say affiliate, but that's not the right word, is it? Every BBC franchise office has been made aware that this is happening, which is good which is very good, in fact. Um, so we'll keep no fingers crossed that something will come out of that. Whereabouts is BBC Cardiff then, Matt? Right, the, uh, the postcode for it, if anyone wants to jot this one down, is Charlie Foxtrot 5 to Yankee Quebec. And it's on the Clantricent Road. Um, it's not too far from the centre of Cardiff. Um, there's, it's in, within walking distance of most of the major car parks. Uh, you pop onto Google Maps there, you'll you'll see directions how to get there quite easily. It's uh, not difficult to get to at all. Well, that's good to hear. Excellent stuff. So that's, that's how you get to BBC Cardiff. Now, of course, if you are on uh, Facebook um, at, oh Lord, do you know, I've written all this down and in this panic over Skype chats, it's all gone. Search on Facebook for, for uh, what is it called, Sav? Is it the Vape and Flash Mobs UK or something like that? Yes. Vip. I wrote it down, but I don't know where I put it now. Oh, dear, you, mean, you, can, you can see how well prepared we are tonight. It's the holidays, man, well, it's, it's bad. It's, it's terrible, isn't it? It is. So are you going to Newcastle? I'm going to go to Newcastle, yes. I shall be stood outside the Pink Palace at Barrack Road. I shall be there from about 5 to 11. Uh, Cliffy's coming down here. We meet up and we shall drive up. Find somewhere to dump the car, probably next to St James's Park. If it's is it still called St James's Park? Yes. We'll be we'll be parking there, and then walk up Barrack Road, leaving a great trail of vapor behind us like a train, and camp outside uh, BBC Newcastle. 
So is there a BBC place in Durham as well? Uh, there's not, no. There used to be a, an affiliate office there. I don't know whether anything's happening in Middlesbrough, though. If anybody knows of anything happening in Middlesbrough, can you bang it into chat? Because, as far as I'm aware, nothing's going on. Mm. So there is I a place in Middlesbrough. haven't heard of anything Middlesbrough. in Middlesbrough. Yeah, there is, there is a place in Middlesbrough. You've heard nothing, sir? No, not a thing. But what I have got from chat, um, Davy Malik has said, I've got the executive producer from Midlands today calling me tomorrow to arrange something. Get in. And DJ has said, we have written and emailed Mike Bettinson, managing editor of BBC East Midlands, who may come to see us with reporters. Mm -hmm. And Silver Zero has said, on Facebook, it's Vapors, Flash Mobs, UK. That's the one. Vapors, Flash Mobs, UK. Everybody write it down, because I'm going to forget it. Va in fact, I'll write it down. Vapors, Flash Mobs, UK. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not just in the UK. This is also happening in Germany in 19 places, didn't they say? Yep. 19 places. It's happening in France. We don't know quite where yet. And I'm, he I'm hearing it's happening in Italy. And in Greece, which is interesting. It's all very good. All it, at the same time? Yep, all at the same time. All uh, There's two wide. places in the Netherlands as well, from where Ghost just said. Isn't this fabulous? Throughout Europe, throughout Europe, vapors are gathering outside local television and radio stations for vape meets. Incredible, that. Isn't it? Oh. It's called affirmative action. It's... It's to give the world at large a lesson that civil disobedience can happen civilly. Why civilly. call it civil disobedience? Well, this isn't civil disobedience <coughs> because we'll not be breaking any laws or being particularly disobedient. But it's to prove the point, or it will prove the point, I think, that should push comes to shove and sh come to shovel, we will be capable of being civilly disobedient in all kinds of different places. Well, it's intensive lobbying, really, isn't it? It's, uh, yes. But it's a peaceful vape, mate. And Sarah, of course, you're going to London, aren't you? I will be at the London meet, yes. What's happening there? Where's that at? What time's it start? Who's going? Have we any M MEPs going to that one? Uh, well, it's being organised by Alan, Alan Final on the uh, on the forums. Uh, last time I looked, I think we had 20 plus, although I'm not sure if all the names have made it on there. Mm -hmm. um, it's at Portland Place at 11. I don't know who's going in the way of MEPs. I know he's asked quite a few. I well, don't know who's accepted. I think Marina Yanakoudakis said that she wanted to go. Right, OK. Um, and from, from what I can gather... Um, the ECR group, Conservatives, have been circulated because their press officer got on to me about that and said they were circulating it all the way around. And the Aldi group have also been told about it, so that's getting circulated all the way around as well. So, whereabouts is Portland Place, did you say? Portland Place, yeah. That's, is that the new one? Uh, yes. The yes, flash they're not in the donut, donut anymore, as far as I know. Um, so, Portland Place is, is where we'll be at 11 o'clock. And of course, you were with the BBC this morning, weren't you? I was. I was out playing with the boys from Radio 4. Well, we'll talk about that in the second half, but did you get a chance to mention to them that anything was going on? I did. I told the researcher. The researcher said... Sorry, not the researcher, the producer, who said that he wasn't actually working on Saturday, but that he would let people know. Now, who those people would be, I don't know. <laughs> but here's hoping. I was going to say, let's keep our fingers crossed it's not big burly security guards that will come and arrest you. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I will, I'm going to ask everybody to do this for me, if you will. Um, SWAF needs footage on this. This is going to be, it's Europe-wide. It is Europe-wide. So take with you your iPhone or your Android phone. Other smartphones are available. See what I did there, Sav? I've been learning mm. off Andy Sutton. This is good. Take take whatever recording device you have with you and get some footage. There are links all over the place as to where it can be sent, but we'll get that sorted out. Um, just tweet us. We'll tweet up the links for, for where you can send your footage. But if anything does happen, 
if the cameras come out or if a reporter comes out, everybody get your iPhone or your Android phone and other smartphones are available and film film it actually happening. It doesn't matter if it's jerky and, and queer and horrid and stained up and your thumbs in the way or whatever. It doesn't matter. Get the footage and get it in because that'll go onto the big swaffery, into the, the massive, big, humongous full length feature film and obviously we'll show footage as well on vapertrails.tv we'll say however that you do need to make sure that people have given their permission to appear uh, film crews as a matter of course do uh, but you know just just ask everybody are you all right with this being shown on vapor trails and on swath if anybody says no can you just take a picture of that particular person so that andy can see it and and pixelate the face or you know whatever it is they do uh, to make sure that you know nobody's featured that doesn't want to be um that's pretty much where we are with that anything to add sav yeah i've got a few bits from chat um regarding it going um not just uk we've got lana marie popper tolson who put on our facebook page i'm trying to convince my national tv stations over here to cover the meets and protests on the 11th around europe and was asking for details of all the things that were going on excellent um, Yoda dude has typed in, I think this sentiment is just perfect, he says, I will stand outside alone, I don't care, I may be one, but I represent thousands. And I thought that just covers everything. Um, absolutely right, I had heard people saying, well, there's only going to be four or five, trust me, those four or five are four or five out of what I hope is going to be hundreds and thousands of people all over Europe. And the fact that there's somebody outside every BBC station, every TV station of whatever networks there are, and this is where I show my ignorance of, of the mainland Europe, but outside all of these television and radio stations, it's, it could even be a Guinness World Record. Do you want to comment on that, Matt? Well, I think, yeah, I, I think you're right. It's uh, regardless of how many people show up to each individual uh, establishment, the fact that people will be there will, will pass on a message that, you know, we, 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 we want people to know we're here. And, uh, yeah, I'm lost for words here. Uh, we want people to know we're here and, uh, you know, we want to be heard and we want to, we want to, we want to voice our opinions and, and our views. Absolutely, yes. I mean, I think that's absolutely right. I think it, it, it's great. I heard a click there. Who was going to say something? Go on, Saf. I've got more, and I've also got a question which I think we'll have to deal with, but I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, Formigo said, we contacted the police informing them of this action. They applauded it. The entire 112, which I'm guessing is the same as our 999, eats, lives, breathes, e cigs. They love them. Brilliant. Mor <laughs> Morsley has said Northamptonshire, a couple of us are handing out leaflets, vaping and welcoming anybody who wishes to join us. Superb. DJ said, yep, spoke to uh, Nottinghamshire police who welcomed it and gave me a crime number. A what? A crime number. A crime number? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's it, plan the head, I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, can, I, can, I, can I please ask for more details? Why did you get a crime number? I love that idea. We're going to arrest somebody. We just don't know who yet. Yeah, Some just... colours are going to be felt. <laughs> Yoda said, had my name put forward to date to a BBC journalist who wanted to speak to someone who was going to the Birmingham meet between 10 and 11. She wanted my full name, email and phone number, so I guess I just have to wait to be contacted. Sounds like a good thing. And the question has come from Vapors UK and says, Dave, thoughts on banners, please. Ah, right. Okay. Let's 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 give this a little bit of thought. I for a donkey's age over the last twelve months, and Sav will bear me out on this one, we have battled right royally to throw this bloody astroturfing thing off. Even when Sav and I went across to Brussels, MEPs were asking the question, who's funded you? Are you in the pay of big tobacco? Are you in the pay of e-cig manufacturers and e-cig vendors? And we said, no, we're not, because we're not. Make no, you know, kind of said where we're from, via trails and all the rest of it, and that, yes, we take advertising, but if... Rolls-Royce wanted to advertise, and given the number of cars they sold last year, there's no reason why they shouldn't. Uh, 
if Range Rover wanted to, if, if Squirt for Men, or I don't care. If anybody wants to advertise, um, you know, non-e-cig stuff, we'll take those adverts. Well, I really don't care. But so all of, all of this, the consumers are consumers. That it's what we are. I mean, and, and again, Savile back me up on this. We make nothing. We make no money out of vapor trails. No consumer, no true consumer, um, as far as MEPs and other politicians are concerned, no consumer makes any money out of e cigs And it just, I think it just reinforces the point that this isn't AstroTurf if there's not professionally built banners and stuff like that because the question's going to be asked who paid for it now i know where there is one banner is going to be and i know it's a non e company that's come up with it because it's a vapor who owns a printing company that's come up with that i think that's great i can't see it being a problem because if the question is asked you can make the answer and it gives you an inroad to explaining more about why things are being done the way they are. I mean, if you want to take placards and stuff like that, lovely. Get a big sheet of cardboard, smack it on a broom shank, and get a git big black felt tip pen. But I think if we all turned up with like the kinds of things that you see the unions using, you know, when they're protesting against the NHS cuts or or anything like that, where they're all properly printed and they're all put on properly made holdy uppy things that you march around with, that's going to look so funded and so. It's just going to make people wonder where has the money come from for this and and i do think that we've got to make it loud and clear we are ordinary people with a big beef against potentially being forced into an early grave because what the european union is suggesting they would like to see or at least the commission and the council is not going to work for over 50 percent of us and I think it's important that we get that across. I mean, when you look at the text of, of what's there, and for those that are interested, and everybody should be, it's up on the Save ESIGs website. Now, the full text of, of what was agreed in Core Repper is up there. When you look at that and consider that, that'll be outlawed. What you've got, Keith, will be outlawed. That'll be outlawed. That'll be Sorry, le listening to all this, uh, maybe I'm being cynical, but there's a certain hypocrisy in politicians asking that question in the first place. Asking what question? Who's funding it? Oh, yeah. I would agree Is there not? Oh, there's more than a certain hypocrisy, given how much funding they get from various different exactly. sources. Yes. Yes, without a doubt. Without a doubt. But, yeah, that, that's... It, it's kind of... We've got to be, I think, very sure that the likes of Stanton Glance can't point at us and say, funded by tobacco, funded by e cig makers, that the likes of Simon Chapman can't, you know, invoke his ineffable crap. That, sorry, did I just say that out loud, Sav? I think so. Yes. You know, it, it's, there are people out there that, and Martin McKay's another one, who, yeah, funded by e cig makers. And, and you, you just want to tell them where to go. And I just, don't, I just don't think it's a good idea to give them ammunition. So I'm not saying we have to look amateurish. I'm just saying we're consumers, that we're, we need to look like consumers because that's what we are. And do you know what? Anybody that's in authority tuning into this show tonight will say how amateurish I am. I don't know about anything else. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it, it really is a case of making sure that people understand that this is not something that's been organised by the industry. It's not something that's been organised by Big Tobacco. It's not something that's been organised by a political group. It's something that we, as users, as consumers, the people that no decisions ought to be made about without talking to us first. It's us that's doing it. And I just, I just want that to be in in your face. Does that make sense, Sav? It does. I'll just cover the last few bits that I've got from chat on this. Um, first of all, the crime number. Dream Vapor says crime number equals a ticket for the computer for advance notice. Oh. And Vapor UK says honest, we don't plan crimes ahead and not. 
<laughs> the apologies hang, on, to hang, say, on, hang on, hang on, just a minute. We don't plan, plan crimes ahead in Nottingham. Have you not heard of Robin Hood? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, not everybody in Nottingham plans crimes ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> The apologist has said Southampton Police, they're happy. Now, Formigo has said we have two banners, 2,500 leaflets, 10,000 business cards, all paid for by Vapors, not a single company involved. Good. Yep. Um, Paul XB has said, hey, hey Dave, we've got our local Labour MP coming to our shop tomorrow morning, John Woodcott. So, brilliant again. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Labour? Mm-hmm. Labour MP. A Labour MP going to the shop? Oh, <laughs> brilliant! Sorry, sir. Carry on. All good. Disco Dare says, I'm going to print out some leaflets and have Matt Gluggle's thoughts on the TPD printed on them. Good. And Mark Shaw has said, if anyone from the BBC asks who paid for it, say, the same people who pay your wages, the public. Exactly. And very boring has asked, can he... Bring giant inflatable rats. Uh, um, yes. Why the hell not? <laughs> it's Glasgow for God's sake. Take what you like. Is that actually a giant inflatable rat? Isn't that a um, what do you call the damn things? A I kebab. Said something I shouldn't. Go on. Sporing. I nearly said a politician. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. But I didn't see it, I just nearly said it. I think that's possibly a good point to go to the adverts, isn't it? Yes. We'll go, we'll take the adverts, and when we come back, when we come back, this young lady on your screen now, who I have to say scrubs up remarkably well, <laughs> um, she's going to tell us what she's been up to today, and I'm excited. It's excited us, again. <laughs> I'm not going to say what I said on Monday, but I am. And we'll be back in two minutes, don't go anywhere. in Yorkshire for your EC needs. That's iVaper.co.uk and iVaper-Elixir.co.uk iVaper and iVaper-Elixir.co.uk Proud sponsors of VaporTrails.tv And we are back in the room here on Thursday 9th, the 9th of January, a scant week before ITV plays out the Tonight Show oh, on yes. ESIGs. That's a week tonight at half past seven on ITV. I'm going to try and get Chris Choi to come onto the show after the Tonight Show has gone out and we can talk about it. I don't know whether he will, but I'm going to try. He did say he would, so... Let's keep All our right. fingers crossed. That'll be that'll be very good uh, if we can get that to go on. But don't forget that a week tonight on the 16th of January at 7:30, the Tonight Show, that some of which was recorded in this very—I'll use the word studio. 
breakfast room that's been painted black. Now, you might have recall at the top of the show, we did say that there'd been one or two technical issues and Sarah, who's, uh, <laughs> who's sitting there, has just told me how she's decided to make it look as though she's looking at the camera and how was that? <laughs> oh. I've got to look at Keith's right nipple. <laughs> I didn't realise this shirt was so <laughs> revealing. <laughs> well, let's let's. Uh, I would try and zoom in, but I'm not sure. What? Right there. <laughs> it's, it's funny that all the way during the adverts, Keith was sat like that. What? <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I do want you to say. Uh, I want you to tell everybody what you said during the adverts about politicians. Well, it it, it it's just this whole business of the hypocrisy. You know, I know you don't believe everything you read in the papers, but all this business about the the Energy Select Committee and those MPs who sit on it, who have financial interests in companies making wind turbines and all the rest of it. Yeah, well... You know, how dare they ask questions like that? You're That's right. what I'm saying. You're right. How dare they ask who's funded all the placards and whatever. You, you're so right in what you say. So right in what you say. But let's go on to brighter things. One, one of the reasons that uh, this was come up with, and it's, it's not a Vapor Trails idea, it's a viewer's idea, which thrills me even more. Um, one of the reasons we did this was to try and get the BBC to give us a bit more airtime um, and actually cover e-cigs in a bit more depth. And wouldn't you just know it, that's where Sarah's been today, isn't it, Sarah? Mm. It certainly is, yes. I've been with the boys from Radio 4. The boys from Radio 4, that sounds very pally. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, for anybody who doesn't know how it happened, um, a researcher from the BBC contacted Dave about um, a programme that they were planning on Radio 4, and Dave thought I might like to do it. Now, I'm not quite sure why, because I've never really done radio before or anything like that, but, well, in at the deep end. Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> I'll tell you why. There were two very good reasons. One, it was this morning, and that would have meant me going down to London. They couldn't do it over the phone or by a Skype or anything like that. Mm. I would have had to have gone down to London in the first place. And secondly, I happen to know Sarah is particularly erudite, as you will find out. <laughs> gobby. Gobby. I didn't want. I didn't want to say gobby, but yeah, she's gobby. Go on then, Sarah. Carry on. Well, the program that they're doing is called um, the Long View. And what, what they do with that program is they, um, they take an issue from uh, current times and they compare it and make parallels with, um, with things that have happened in history. And in this particular case, what they were doing was comparing um, e-cigarettes with snuff in the 17th century. Because uh -huh. um, I know absolutely nothing about snuff, as you can imagine. All um, I know is it's a movie. <laughs> Not the sort of movie that I watch, <laughs> but um, yeah. So that that was the the basic theme of the program, um, and it was Jonathan Friedland and uh, Rod Little, Little, sorry, who people will probably remember because he wrote an article in the Spectator, which was called something along the lines of the BMA's bizarre jihad against e-cigarettes. Yes. E-cigs. So, do we need to guess which side of the fence he's come down on then? Well, Rod Liddell is quite a heavy smoker, um, oh. and he he sees um, vapors. Uh, he thinks we're we're all a bit of a cop out ah. because, we ha <laughs> because we haven't um, towed the smoker line and told them all where to stick their bands and things like that. But he also does use e-cigs. Mm. Um, he t he uses um, well, he actually had an enjoy with him. Um, which he uses, as he put it, when the fascists won't let me smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish he wouldn't sit on the fence. I'd love to know what he really thinks. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was good fun to do it. Um, the first part of the uh, programme they recorded in the V&A Museum. That's uh, the Victoria and Albert? Victoria and Albert Museum, right. yeah. Yeah. Um, and that part was uh, historical and about snuff, and they were looking at antique snuff boxes and things like that. And then I met them um, after they'd left there. I met them in the Marquis of uh, Anglesey, mm -hmm. um, 
they chose that as a venue because it was a previously a coffee house where people used to meet together and take snuff and talk about current issues and things like that. And my role in it really was to um, to detail what it's like to be a vapor today, um, what vaping is all about, what um, you know the way that um, the, the way that it's kind of evolved, the different ways that we personalise the kit that we use, and what they were doing was basically drawing parallels with. Um, the way that snuff was used in the 17th century. Right, I just want to dive in here because mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm a little bit lost. Mm -hmm. What were they saying about snuff? Did, did, were they reckoning that snuff was used as a kind of a, a harm reduction from smoking pipes and cigars because cigarettes weren't invented then? That's right. I mean, at, at the time, people were smoking pipes. Right. Um, the, the harm reduction side of it was discussed, but it wasn't the main part. The main part with snuff was that it was used by a social elite and it was um, something that people aspired to, um, which obviously I, <laughs> I had to point out that there's not much very elite about vaping. Yeah, I don't know, dear girl. Well, no, no, it was a social thing, snuff, wasn't it? Uh, it, it certainly was, yeah. don't it, Pitt? It was, you know, and that was what that was one of the similarities because they did used to gather together in the coffee shops That's right. and use snuff, much in the same way as we have vape meats. Um, yeah, I hadn't, you know, I, I hadn't thought of it that way, but yes, when you look at it like that, going back, because you were around at the time, Keith. Yes, of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, another of the parallels was was the, you know, the snuff boxes were person, they were personalised and collectible. Yeah. Um, much in the same way as we have men in sheds personalising mods, people collecting mods and, and all that sort of thing. Um, I, I, should, I should say that while we were off screen, Keith's just pointed at this little lot that's in front of us here. Because, do you collect mods, Matt? Oh, well, just a couple. What, what you got? You really want to... You haven't got the time. It's as bad as that, is it? Oh, yeah. That's what I like to hear. Here's Go something on. that's uh, probably a bit more... Uh, Relevant for the <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed, yes. I'm late to the look of that. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting comparison. That though, I'd never thought the, of it. Yeah, it must be you know, the, the, the the snuff angle. No, I, I so did this go out live, uh, uh, Sarah? No, it goes out on uh, Tuesday morning at nine o'clock, and then again Tuesday evening at nine thirty on Radio Four. Right, Tuesday morning, nine o'clock. Tuesday morning, nine o'clock on Radio Four, and Tuesday evening at what time? Nine thirty. So nine and nine thirty yeah. on, on Tuesday. Tuesday. Next week's going to be a hell of a week. Starting Saturday, it's going to be a hell of a week for e-cigs in in mainstream media, Radio Four, ITV, and then with a little bit of luck and a following wind, Telly and Radio on Saturday. This is fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Sav, what's, uh, what's chat had to say about all of this? Right, from chat we've got Blaze says, The Long View is a really recent programme usually, so this should be good. Mm -hmm. um, Super 7 has said, My local vape-friendly pub gives out free snuff. Uh, Mark mm -hmm. Shaw has said, Just like vapers, then these snuff users, we are the social elite. I quite like that, I must admit. I do, I do really, really like the idea of being classed as the social elite. <laughs> Yoda Duda said, I can buy snuff locally still, but it's very rare. Um, Eagle Maniac says, yeah, you can still get it in the States. And Mark Shaw has said, at Gary Dibley's World Vaping Day meet, the landlord was passing around the snuff. Well, isn't that interesting? As I say, it, it never occurred to me at all to, 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 to draw any parallels between snuff. As it, see... I don't know about anybody else, but in this part of the world, we're quite a mining community up here, are we not? Yes. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, my granddad... There's a lot of snuff use there. Well, you used to buy your snuff in an aluminium tin. Yes. Which is kind of a contradiction in terms. But the, the, little, the little snuff container was made of aluminium because aluminium doesn't spark down the pits. And my granddad, oh Lord, how old would I be? I think the first time I went down the pit, I was 16. Because he took us down for a look round, as you do, you know, because you like to see mm. what your granddad's getting up to, apparently. Um, and I went down to have a look round, and he knew I smoked. I'd been smoking in front of my mum and dad for years by then. And he showed me how to take snuff between three fingers. Yes. And we went down, and he says, This is me granddad, I've got to go to close you up. All right, son, 
When the gun's down the shaft, mind, and the now's the kind of talk now that'll spark. Do you want to translate, Sof? <laughs> when it goes down into the mind, you can't take anything that would cause a spark. So what they'll have to do, young, is going to have to either use pigtail or snuff. <laughs> I love that word. What? Pigtail, I think is brilliant. That's what it was called? Yeah, I know, I think it's brilliant. It always used to appeal to me, that. Yes. Can you tell <laughs> everybody what I said? Um, I forgot the beginning of it, but something along, if you're going down the mine, young man, you have to either use, was it wrapped tobacco or snuff? You can't smoke. Yes, it was It was either chewing tobacco or snuff. So when we go down, he says, no, what the days, he says, get these three fingers together like that and just <laughs> stick them gently into the top of the, the powder. Get these a little pinch and up the one and then up the other and then the vomit's over there. Over to yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, look, look at that <laughs> distinction, you see. You, you, you were saying the minor, and what Sarah's saying is that, you know, the 18th century guy with his uh, lace cuffs and putting <laughs> some on the back of his hand. Go, <laughs> yeah, yes. You know, there's quite a... Well, in, I mean, I've, I am I'm reliably informed that in some places they'll get a mirror and a credit card and make two little lines and get a £50 note to take snuff. It's white snuff. Don't know where you get that from. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, Sarah, coming back to Sarah, I haven't hijacked yeah. that little bit. Um, <laughs> after you'd done the bit in, in Covent Garden, Yeah. what happened? And who else was there, by the way? Well, uh, apart from Rod Little and Jonathan Friedland, there was uh, Fraser, Co Fraser Cropper. Oh, right. Yeah, Fraser was there. Um, was he on good form? Pardon? Was he on good form? He was on very good form, yes. Good, good. Yes. Um, at the end of that section, they um, thanked me for my time and said they were moving to Barts to do a section on uh, regulation and bands and things like that. So I said, well, I'd like to come and watch. <laughs> Which they agreed to on the... Um, Basically, if I agreed not to speak, I could come and watch. <laughs> Did you not speak? <laughs> I wasn't allowed to. I wasn't allowed to speak, but they let me go along. So we all went along to um, to the museum, actually, in uh, Bart's Hospital, where we were joined by Vivian Nathanson. Oh, boo, boo, boo! Of the BMA. Boo, boo, and, boo, please. Uh, yeah, uh, an interesting conversation ensued between uh, Fraser and Rod Little and Vivian Nathanson, and um, I have to say that Fraser and Rod did us proud. Good. Um, it's a recorded program, so I don't know, you know, how they're going to edit it, but both of them were on message. Um, both both of them did us proud, and um, and Vivian really didn't have much in the way of answers to the points that they were making to her. Well, because she never does. Rod Liddell's quite a character, isn't he? He's very much so. Very much so, yeah. <laughs> so who, whose idea do you think it was to, to do this snuff-vape comparison? I imagine John, uh, Jonathan Friedland or his producer. Really uh, clever, his, his that. Producer. Pardon? Really clever, that, I yeah. think. Mm. Yes. It was an interesting programme, and, and I do think that... Um, you know, when people hear it on Tuesday, I, I hope that the way that the way it's edited, um, it's going to come across quite positive for us. Well, I must admit, I, I really hope so. And I know when we were talking about it earlier, the uh, the impression I got was that if you, Rod Little, and Fraser Cropper had all been on song and and uh, <coughs> and speaking the way I know all three of you can. not it's mm. got to be. It's got to be positive for us. I think that's brilliant, and and I, I just want to say a big thank you for standing in and doing the job for me. I think that's, that's uh, my pleasure. It's it's amazing of you to do it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, mm. We'd better take a swift break, and then when we come back, I'm looking at Sav's eyes, and she's reading at ninety to the dozen here. <laughs> so I have a feeling the chat's going to have a look to see it, which is all good because this is your show. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. Unless it's to get some snuff.
Right, now, hello and welcome back. We're back again. Keith Curran. Why are you always wait till the adverts? I don't know. Tell the story well, about your granddad and your pipe, Keith. Go on. Well, you telling the tale of, of going down the mine and, you know, your grandfather telling you how to use snuff and all the rest of it. It reminded me when I was probably in my late teens, early 20s, I decided to smoke a pipe. And my grandfather, of course, had smoked a pipe all his life. He, mm. he never had one out of his mouth. So I go along to his house. He says, oh, you're smoking a pipe. I said, oh, yes. He says, uh, what, what is it you're smoking, son? And I said, oh, it's three nuns, Granddad. He says, it smells to me as if one of the buggers is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. He'd always smoked St. Bruno. He oh, well, I was, uh, I was a Ogden's Walnut Plug for a while. Well, I like three nuns. Well, hey, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> won't go any further. Any right. part in the storm. <laughs> Sav, over to you. There's a lot of chat there going on about um, still the, the vape meets, and people are worried about possibly turning up and being the only person there. Um, so I think we need to, to cover that again. Right, absolutely right. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this vape meet, to me at any rate, the vape meet is Europe wide. And it's, it's not about how many people there are at any one given place, it's how many people there are all over the place. Because, should you be asked about it, wherever you are, whether you're in Nottingham, Northampton, Middlesbrough, Newcastle, Birmingham, Manchester, Bristol, Cardiff, um, London, o other television and radio stations exist. There, you know, Glasgow, Edinburgh, wherever they are. If you're asked, you can easily, very easily say, and perfectly truth truthfully, I am one of thousands of people who have come to a landmark that is in every major city throughout Europe to stand and be counted and let my voice be heard. Whether there's one of you, whether there's two of you, or whether there's 200 of you, the message is all the same at any given one. We are individual vapors, consumers of e-cigs, vaporizers, electronic cigarettes, call them what you like. We're individual consumers of these devices who are all meeting at a landmark that every major city has in order to make our voices heard. And the numbers at any individual point are not that important. But when you consider that there's going to be, it could be 20,000 people throughout Europe on a Saturday morning at 11 o'clock UK time, 12 o'clock Central European time, all with the same message at the same time in a similar place in every city, that's a powerful message. And it doesn't matter whether there's one, 
10, 100 or 1,000 at any given point. It really doesn't make a difference because you're part of that whole big thing. Matt, what do you think of that? I think you're spot on. Uh, you just, just consider yourself being amplified. You know, you, there might be one of you, there might be three of you. It doesn't matter. There's, there's more of us all around the place. We're all going to be there at the same time. We're all going to be in touch via Twitter, via other social networks. You know, you're not alone, even if you physically are. Absolutely right. Sarah? I agree. You know, I, I think the bigger story is the number of places we're going to turn up, not necessarily the number of people that turn up to each place. Exactly right. Um, Saf? Sorry, um, got a reader I've got, Andy D, uh, both Andy G D and GMFC Fantasy are both saying, well, wouldn't it look so better if we had more people? And you then have that question, well, is that all you can muster? And Andy D saying, well, maybe I should contact someone like Catherine from a seat there and ask if they can email their members to inform them about the Saturday to boost numbers. Well, absolutely. There's, there's no reason why not. The only thing I will say is if, the, if you're a vendor going mufti, We've kind of sort of said black shirts, whether anyone will be able to see them under overcoats or whatever, really doesn't matter. But just don't go logoed up. If you're a vapor, you're a vapor. End of story, really. Um, and it's not like any vendor is putting any money into this at all, because they're not. So therefore, um, why not? Uh, you know, everybody, just get on everybody, get everybody to turn out as many people as you can. But I, listen, if I was to turn up to Newcastle and there was only me there, I'd just shout a little bit louder. I mean, I know I'm a gob on a stick. I know. I'm fully aware of that. And I know everybody thinks I'm not shy. So I'll tell you different. Because I am. I actually am. Keith knows. Yeah. Oh. I am. You, yes, I'm shy. yes, if you say so. I'm an extrovert, but I'm shy. I don't, I don't play well with other children. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if I was on me Todd, what the hell? I don't care. Take every mod I've got and stand there and shout loud and go and knock on the door and say, you know there's vapours at every BBC station interview me, you swines. It's what I would be doing. Yeah, and I mean, as Yoda dude said earlier, and he's typed it in again, as I stated earlier, I may be alone, but I represent us all. Exactly right. Exactly. You, 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 you want, no, it doesn't matter whether there's one of you there or more, you're one of thousands of voices that are all saying the same thing come Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. Well, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a peaceful, coordinated, in inverted commas, demonstration, isn't it? It's a vape, mate, yes. We're kind of not using the word demonstration or uh, protest. Well, that's what I there. said, in inverted peaceful, commas. In inverted commas, yes. It's, it's people, people making their voices heard. It's people demonstrating that, look, we're not... Nobody's going to drop dead. You know, we'll all be sitting sucking on great big things like this, or stood sucking on them, drinking flasks of coffee, meeting up in the pub afterwards. That's always a good thing. We like meeting up in the pub afterwards. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it simply shows to the people who might matter, or who think they matter, there's power here. And we know there's MEPs are turning out. We, I know there's the, the prospective MEP, Liberal Democrat MEP, for the North East is going to be turning out. Angelic is coming out to Newcastle. And she is desperate to talk to vapors. Absolutely desperate uh, to talk to vapors. She's a hundred percent behind us. You know what? That's the kind of thing we want. I, I, like I said on Monday and I said on, uh, on Sunday, I'm really, really excited by this. I'll I'm going to play the video in because, yes, I'm getting too excited. I'll need a tissue.
there you go that's where you need to be Saturday morning at 11 o'clock in case you just ask why the BBC um, bottom line on it is BBC is the national broadcaster we pay for them to do what they do we pay our license fees those of us that pay license fees which is probably all of us pay our license fees because as vapors we're law-abiding people um, and yet it would appear that BBC television particularly is, has not been particularly keen on giving us a great deal of airtime. This might change their minds a little bit. That is amongst the whole idea. Now, um, Sav, we got anything more from chat? Yeah, I've got a few more bits. Um, Lena Marie Popper Tolson said, I've sent emails to three Norwegian TV stations to ask them please cover it. Hopefully at least one of them will pick up on it. That'll be good. Yeah, it'll be brilliant. Um, now, John, not Matt, who used to be Matt CLK, but he's now John, <laughs> says, for those like myself unable to go, try phoning around the studios to see if they will talk to you. My phone is going to be hot. <laughs> or who's not free well, says, I was gutted about not being able to go before, but after watching this show, I'm now becoming distraught. Bless. Ah. Uh, no, no, Mark, Mark, Vanessa say, has seriously, said... Seriously, hang on just a minute. Sorry. From, from all of us, I know you're probably bad in bed with the show on and both fake and one sock. Get well soon, Bonnie lad, you'll be missed. But don't do anything stupid on Saturday. If you're still poorly bad in bed with a shawl on, waiting for the doctor to come and rub your chest with Vic, wait for Vic to turn up before you do anything. Best wishes to you, matey. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Sav, carry on. Vanessa has said there are free hugs in Southampton, so nobody will be alone. And um, Vapologist has said, if you can't make a meet, tweet your hearts out. Indeed, right. And if there's free hugs in Southampton, I'm away down there. <laughs> especially if they're off a lady only seems mm. fair only seems fair um before we go disappearing off and and go off air and stuff like that i want to take a minute to ask a couple of questions of both matt and of sarah because they both have handles forum handles that have had me wondering cybernoid and twiggle so we'll start with you matt why cybernoid Right, uh, back in the 80s there was a game on the old 8-bit computers, the uh, the Spectrums, the Commodores and the Amstrads, called Cybernoid, spelt C-Y-B-E-R-N-O-I-D. Yes. Um, I just changed it a little bit and stuck with it, seems, basically. Seems fair, seems fair, and I well remember that, because I was, uh, believe it or not, working on an Amstrad mag at the time. Um, but now we come to somebody who appears to have blushed slightly since I mentioned Twigglet. <laughs> Do tell Sarah why Twigglet. It's just because I, I am a big Marmite fan. And oh I Marmite! Oh bloody! <laughs> you know I used to like her as well. I've I've gone right off you now. I didn't realise you like. Do you like menthol as well? Like what? Menthol. No, no, no! I don't like menthol. No. Oh, that's all right then. That's no. okay. But I have got, I have got Marmite e juice. Oh, <laughs> God, <I'm dying. laughs> even Keith if doesn't it like. Helps, it's revolting. Pardon? If it helps, it's revolting. Well, that stands to reason because Marmite's bloody revolting. Do you like it with it bread and butter? With bread and uh, butter. I I eat it on toast. Yes. <laughs> Toast with a low pack. Mm -hmm. Yes, nice. Mm -hmm. Hang on, it's just a minute. Just, just not quite as good inhaled. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can imagine it's not. What did you say, Sav, about Marmite? Oh, it's got to be Le thinly pack. cut toast with low pack and then Marmite. Yes. Oh, That's it. Perfect. It's got to be low pack, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. What? Perfect. With coffee. Matt, please tell me you don't like Marmite. I'm afraid I do. Oh, <laughs> bloody hell. Yeah. Right, that's it. That's it. I'm out of here. I'm gone. Full of vitamins and nutrients. It tastes like shite. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, right. right. Chat, here's the thing I want you to do. You either type uh, into chat, nice or shite. <coughs> nice or <coughs> shite. It's a poll. <coughs> You've got 20 seconds starting now. 20 seconds starting now. Nice or shite? It's a poll. Ah, nice is won by a male. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 20 seconds yet. Come on. Uh, it's on my You've chat. lost this battle. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> right, what is it, Sav? Well, as I'm reading chat, I didn't see any shite. I only saw nice. Ah, uh, yeah. 
Got right well, I, off the I always here. think shite's much more expressive than shit, isn't it, really? <laughs> if you look, don't you think so? It's a word. <laughs> I'm just wondering if Peter Cole will make a Marmite juice now. Oh, will you, please? Marmite. Will you stop giving him ideas? Marmite and loco. He's got, he's got the bloody Halloween to sort another one of those. No. Marmite menthol. Oh, will you shut up? Marmite menthol. Oh, here. Right, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Marmite bacon. Will uh, you be quiet? Uh, oh. Sav, please tell me somebody in chat's on my side. Yeah, I think there's one person in chat. I think oh. Leanna Lawless doesn't like Marmite. We'll convert her. Yeah. And Lena Marie Papa Torson doesn't like it either. Oh, well, that's all right then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marmite and mustard on toast. Oh, God. Oh, Have no. you ever had Marmite on toast? Yes. Right. I've tried all the eights Marmite, <laughs> Vegemite, <laughs> Pigeon Shite. <laughs> <laughs> right, and on that note, it was. <laughs> We need to remind people to head over to our Wi Fi radio now where our very own uh, DJ Bobo is. DJ Bobo, the man with the wheels upstairs. DJ Bobo. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Before we get into somewhere we really didn't want to go for that conversation. Oh, man. You I wonder mean, if he's found it yet. Found what? Bobo. Oh, he was being sat on it for the last four weeks. <laughs> Right, I've got a message from Kat saying it's time to say good night, Dave. <laughs> oh, night, <laughs> Dave. Right, from the all sensor. of us, let's let's go around everybody. From Sarah, <laughs> bye bye. From Matt, bye folks. From Keith, good night. From Sav, <laughs> good night. And from me as well. From everybody here at VT Talk. Don't forget to tune in on uh, on Sunday for Dave's Tackle Box. I'll be back on Monday with the Here's Hour and. You know what happens after that. Um, and our wi is on every night this week as well, so if we're not on, they're on. What? Yes, if yes. we're not on, they're on. That's, yep. yes. What Sav said, if we're not on, they're on. But until I see you next time, vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind you down. I'll see those of you that I see on Saturday. Until then, take care. We love you all. Bye-bye. Marmite is shite. Okay.